Hey guys, Jenny Guy Etchen here again. How you guys doing? Hope you guys are good. Well, today I, <laughs> I found something and I would like to share with you guys as usual. So um, this is from BLM. This is from the Black Lives Matter. I'm pretty sure some of you might have seen something like this. It's really here that um, revealed BLM founder Patrice paid her baby father 970k for creative services. Her brother 840k for security. And the fellow director, $2.1 million. And reimbursed for an organization of $73,000 for chartered flight. Wow. This money was supposed to go for charity. Like, I said this when, when, when the Black Lives Matter was, were protesting. I was like, this, this movement has never supported black people. I have not seen, when Black Lives Matter supported black people, I have not seen a black child that they sent to school. I've not seen anything they've done for the black community. The only thing I've seen that they, that they do is protest. And, and use that protest to usher in something new, like the new era. You know, it was during an election year, so we all know what, what they're using it for, except we're still in denial. And um, it's, not, it's not surprising, though. It's not surprising, and I'm going to go into details with you guys. So just stay with me for a second. So um, I'll be showing you a lot of clips, uh, a lot of pictures on... Yeah, and they say Black Lives Matter spent millions in consulting services in 2021 alone. Newly released tax finding revealed that the BLM paid now just 70k to co-founder Patrice Cullors, baby daddy, to help product, produce events, live events, and provide creative services. The foundation also paid the brother 840k, as I've said before. A consulting firm run by the BLM board member Shalomia Boas was paid 2.4 million for providing the organization with operational support. Boa said the last BLM board approved the contract with his friend when he is not a board member. The filing also revealed that Colos reimbursed BLM for $73,000 for a charter flight and paid the foundation $390 for private use and of its $6 million Los Angeles mansion. Wow! Colos resigned from BLM last year amid a wave of scrutiny around the charity finances. <laughs> yeah, it was expected. Controversy surrounding the organization Finances has elected probes by at least two states, uh, two state attorneys general. So, guys, what is trying to tell us? <laughs> this ain't charity. He just, it's just a way to extort money from people and uh, using their emotions. And so, judge, it wasn't about George Floyd. It wasn't about George Floyd. I knew this. I knew this from the beginning of the protest that this wasn't about George Floyd. It wasn't. And now he, 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 they just, they just, she was just distributing the money around her family. I know it's good to help family, but this is this is fraud. This is fraud and it needs to be called out. And there is more. There is more. So the document revealed that the BLM paid company owned by De Montana, the father of Colors Child, nearly nine hundred and seventy thousand to help produce live event and provide the other creative services. And then um, you know it was <laughs> it's just crazy. And you know, guys, the worst part is she keeps denying all of this. She denied everything. Wow. You know, one thing is that um, she did admit that her brother and sister uh, were working for the, uh, and her mother was working for the BLM organization. And the latest financial disclosure came after she has come under fire for receiving a $120,000 payment for consulting fees by BLM. You know, BLM <laughs> is a non profit organization, right? <laughs> yeah. It's not. <laughs> People need to wake up. People need to stop stop following the narrative that's in front of them because it's, it's costing. It's cost. Uh, we can thank uh, the revelations for this came from a 63 page from 990, the annual filing required for a non-profit organization to maintain tax exempt status as a non-profit. This is the BLM Foundation first public accounting of its finances since incorporating since incorporated in 2017. It fledged a non-profit as it has been under the fiscal sponsorship of a well-established charity and wasn't required for publicly disclo disclosure of its finances, right? Until it became independent. <laughs> that's 501c3 non-profit in December 2020. Okay. It was also revealed that BLM ended last fiscal year with almost $42 million. $42 million. That's 2021. Um, it spent $6 million on studio city property, which include a home with six bedrooms, a bathroom, a swimming pool, <laughs> that's luxury life, a soundstage and office space was intended for campus for black artists fellowship and is currently being used for that purpose, as it says here. 
and um, the foundation invested $32 million in stocks from $90 million it received as donation amid racial justice protest in 2020. That means in 2020, they received 90, a hoping sum of 90. This is, this is a cash cow organization, man. And God, people, just, just wake up and you will see, you will see our display in front of you. You see our display in front of you. Here is another interesting one. Klasner owns three properties in Los Angeles including this one in the hills, above the city. All were purchased in 2020, following the success of the foundation fundraising campaign. She also owns the above home, valued at $1.4 million, which is located in the scenic Topanga Canyon. With all this being revealed, I'm pretty sure there will be more coming in the future, which is, which is, which is not, which not going to be crazy for those of us who already know, because of when, when all this started, like I've said before, when all this started, I knew, I knew it was, it was, it wasn't, any good for the people because most people were moved by emotions most people were moved by what they were seeing most people were moved especially by the media i would say 90 percent by the media because the media push was so strong it was so strong and if you remember the pandemic was going on and it was like stay six feet apart um, um wash your hands don't go to crowded places but we didn't see any of that in the protest and um the protest kept going on and a lot of people were like yeah they're scared of the they're scared of the pandemic but uh, they're going to come out to to to, to still protest and, and that that should that should that should be the the wake up call for everyone that come on man wait a second wait a second something is going on here something doesn't fit right because you're telling us to stay at home you're telling us to avoid crowded places you're telling us all these things and now you're telling us to go outside to protest really like okay okay told them to wear the max and if they wear the right come on man we already know the theory by max we already know the theory by max it's not really efficient if it's any efficient, I have to but if it's not, I'm not a doctor, I can't really tell you, but what do you know? Um, 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 with, with all these things we've seen, people should just learn how to control their emotions. Because of these days, your emotions is the key to your pockets. It's the key to your pockets. That's what most commons use, your emotions. Your emotions, they, they, they emotionally cage you to do whatever they want. And I'm pretty sure that's what happened in the 2020 elections emotions not people are not really thinking with their head if not we'll not be in this crisis that we are right now so um guys that's all for today's video i want you all to subscribe to my rumble channel as usual um, check it out in my comments section i have a lot of links for you guys to see there are a lot of videos there you guys are going to enjoy so stay safe till that time